Cursed Maori Warrior Masks The Maori tribe is a native tribe consisting of Polynesian people in New Zealand. The Maori warriors belonging to this tribe are famous for their warfare skills. They are considered to be extremely brave warriors and sometimes even believed to have some supernatural abilities obtained as a result of extreme rituals. Before going to a battle, each Maori warrior used to carve a statue or mask. Maori people believed that if a warrior who had built his statue or mask died in a battle, his spirit would return to that statue or mask. Many Maori warrior masks are kept at a national museum in New Zealand. These masks were provided by the Maori tribe. They believe that most of these masks have spirits of the ancient warriors trapped inside them. In 2010, the Maori masks made it to the headlines around the world when the museum issued a statement in which it warned pregnant women to stay away from these masks as it could invoke a curse. According to Maori tradition, the pregnant or menstruating women are considered to be taboo. They believe that the masks and other ancient artifacts are also taboo, and if the two of them come in contact with each other, a curse could be invoked. Iron Crown of Lombardy According to historians, the Iron Crown of Lombardy was made during the early Middle Ages in the 4th or 5th century. It consists of a large ring of gold that is fitted with a silver band and some precious jewels, all fitted around an iron ring. It is believed that the Iron Crown contains a 1 cm wide iron band that was beaten out of one of the nails used at the crucifixion of Jesus. The crown became a symbol of the Kingdom of Lombards. Later, it was in the custody of the medieval Kingdom of Italy and was used for the coronation of kings in Italy during the 11th and 14th century. Today, this mysterious ancient relic is present in the Cathedral of Monza, which is located near Milan in Italy. According to the popular tradition, the crown was made by Saint Helena, who was the mother of Constantine the Great. She had discovered a nail from the true cross when she ordered to forge a crown around the beaten nail. She believed that it would bring blessings and good fortune to her son. Later, the crown was passed to Theodolena, who was a princess of the Lombards. She received it as a gift from Pope Gregory the Great. In 628 AD, Princess Theodolena donated the crown to the church in Monza. There has been a strong argument amongst the religious scholars over the authenticity of the nail that was used to forge the crown. To this day, there is no consensus about its authenticity. However, it is kept at the Cathedral of Monza just outside of Milan and is considered to be a sacred relic. According to the cathedral authorities, the inner iron ring of the crown is in perfect condition and has shown no signs of rusting, despite being made thousands of years ago. In one of the studies conducted in 1985, it was revealed that magnets do not get attracted to the crown's iron ring. Like many other artifacts associated to Jesus, this artifact is also likely to be a subject of debate amongst historians as well as the religious scholars for many decades to come. La Noce de Pierre one of the strangest discoveries surrounding possible Neolithic structures discovered in the modern day is that of the discovery of La Noce de Pierre located in western France at the base of the hills in Brittany. In fact, the site is so mysterious that next to nothing can be recovered surrounding the remnants of the Neolithic stones that stand in the location. According to researchers, there are roughly 77 standing stones in perfect alignment at the foot of Menes Michael, also known as the Hill of Saint Michel, de Brespa. Although standing stones might sound like a rather dull discovery, these stones are traditionally so massive that they rival the stones used to build Stonehenge. They appear to be a part of an age-old phenomenon of standing stones scattered in alignment all around Western Europe dating as far back as the Middle Bronze Age. In fact, there are more than 50,000 examples of standing stones across Ireland, Great Britain, Brittany and France dating back before the creation of Stonehenge and giving credence to the idea of ancient civilizations having once existed in these areas predating any previously held theories surrounding ancient cities. Due to these mysteries, there have been a number of interesting archaeological theories surrounding these Neolithic structures and their ancient purposes. These theories range from ancient burial sites, massive structures for possible navigation, 
or large standing structures to get accurate measures of time for native tribes using a primitive form of a sundial. Such theories do not help to explain the placement of the stones, however, as the standing stones of La Noche de Pierre are placed in perfect alignment of 77 stones, and many other standing stones seem to lay in perfect alignments following specific directions regardless of where on the world they are placed. This has led some ancient alien conspiracy theorists to believe that the stones were signs for overhead aviation to locate ancient civilizations or acted as signals to show the exact formation of ley lines covering the Earth. Zong Zong and Hua Hua Cloning has been a subject of great controversy due to its potential implications on intelligent life. One of the most significant breakthroughs in the field of cloning was made in 1996, when scientists cloned a sheep named Dolly. Since then, cloning has come a long way and researchers in different parts of the world have been working on perfecting the various cloning techniques. A significant breakthrough was made in the last couple of months of 2017 when a group of scientists used the somatic cell nuclear transfer to clone primates. This is the same technique that was used for cloning Dolly the sheep. Named Zong Zong and Hua Hua, monkeys belonging to the Macaca fascicularis species were the first primates to have ever been cloned using somatic cell nuclear transfer. Unlike the previous attempts of cloning monkeys, researchers used the nuclei from the fetal cells instead of the embryonic cells. Zong Zong was born on 27th of November 2017, and Hua Hua was born on the 5th of December 2017. Both primates were cloned at the Institute of Neuroscience of the Chinese Academy of Sciences situated in Shanghai. Before the successful cloning of Zong Zong and Hua Hua, several attempts had been made in different parts of the world to use somatic cell nuclear transfer for cloning primates. However, these attempts failed as the embryos could not mature into healthy animals. According to Mu Ming Pu, one of the leading scientists at the Institute of Neuroscience, this time the researchers used better microscopy to observe and handle the cells. They also used several compounds to encourage the reprogramming of cells. Although the researchers were able to clone Zong Zong and Hua Hua, the overall success rate was very low even after using these advanced techniques. Only two healthy babies were born out of 60 surrogate mothers. Researchers believe that the perfection of this technique could potentially lead to better understanding and treatment of diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's in humans. Harstein Harstein of Nantes was a Viking chieftain of the late 9th century, known for his attacking voyages in France, Spain, Italy, the Byzantine Empire and England. A powerful warrior, his name was one that sparked fear to others. As son of Ragnar Lothbrok, Harstein was born into a family of ruthless raiders. In 1859, alongside his brother Bjorn, Harstein led a fleet of 62 ships to raid the Mediterranean. The expedition did not get off to a good start. Harstein was defeated by the Kingdom of Astorius in Spain, and later the Muslims of the Umayyad Caliphate. Thankfully for Harstein, the situation soon improved, with a successful sacking of Algeciras and Mazima on the north coast of Africa, followed by further raids into the Balearic Islands. It was on their journey home that Harstein first heard about the famous city of Rome. Hearing about the large amount of treasures that were held there, he decided to change course towards Italy. However, believing they were headed for Rome, Harstein and Bjorn's army actually ended up in the city of Luna. Luna had once been a leading exporter of white Carrara marble, but had now devolved into ruins. Still under the impression Luna was actually Rome, Harstein and Bjorn hatched a plan. First, Harstein sent his emissaries to request food and shelter from the people of Luna and tell them their chieftain was unwell. When their requests were denied by the people of Luna, who were wary of foreign attacks, Harstein's emissaries were sent again into the city. This time, however, they reported that Harstein had died, but on his deathbed had converted to Christianity. The emissaries requested a Christian burial for Harstein, and the gates of Luna were finally opened. However, when Harstein was led into the city in a coffin, he was actually very much alive and fully armed. In the middle of his 
funeral, he jumped up from the coffin and murdered Luna's bishop and proceeded to sack the city. It was said that when Harstein finally realized the city was Luna and not the famous Rome, he was so embarrassed that he massacred every man in sight. Continuing their journey through Italy, Harstein and Bjorn sacked and ravaged Pisa and Fisole, and raided the Byzantine Empire's territories in the eastern Mediterranean. However, luck ran out when their ships were attacked by a Moorish fleet in the Strait of Gibraltar. With only 20 ships remaining, Harstein and Bjorn rose to the challenge and with a severely reduced army still managed to capture the king of Pamplona and ransom him back to his people for 70,000 dinars. Returning home to Loire, Harstein and Bjorn had lost two-thirds of their men, but in the process had become extremely rich. Settled back in France, it didn't take Harstein long to grow restless. He soon allied himself with Solomon, the king of Brittany, and fought against the Franks in 866. He went on to ravage Bourget, Orleans, and Angers before finally being expelled from Loire County by Charles the Bald. Harstein soon looked towards England for riches and plunder. At the grand age of 71 years old, Harstein was still powerful enough to cross into England with an army of 80 ships and occupy the village of Milton in Kent, while his allies landed at Appledore with 250 ships. Alfred the Great feared the Vikings so much he positioned his army between the two to stop them from uniting. In response, Harstein and his forces retreated to Essex, which they used as a base to raid Mercia. However, when the bulk of his men were out raiding, his fort was captured along with the ships, cargo, women and children, which included Harstein's wife and children, by the army of eastern Wessex. Soon after, Harstein launched another attack along the Thames Valley, but was pursued by a Mercian and West Saxon army, and eventually was trapped at Buttingdon. This resulted in the Battle of Buttingdon in 893, where Harstein's men were victorious. But once more, when moving to Chester, Harstein's men were attacked by the Mercians who attempted to starve them by removing any livestock and destroying all the crops in the area. Harstein reacted by leading a revenge raid along the Thames Valley and the River Severn to a new fort on the River Lee. The raid was cut short when Alfred caught up with the army and obstructed the River Lee on either side. Finally, Harstein's forces gave in and abandoned their camp and sent their women back home where they soon followed. At this point, Harstein disappears from the history books. A lifetime of ravaging and raiding dozens of cities across many kingdoms in Europe and North Africa, Harstein had earned himself the title as the lusty and terrifying old warrior of the Loire and the Somme.